Welcome everyone to this lecture module 3 on Synthrophaser Technology Applications. This is the third lecture in the series of lectures on Synthrophaser Technology. Hopefully you have watched the previous lectures on motivation for Synthrophaser Technology and the fundamentals of Synthrophaser Technology. So now this is a very interesting lecture because this emphasizes the motivation for synthrophaser technology again because this is the applications this is where we get to know how we can apply the synthrophaser technology to make our power system more reliable and secure so let's see what we have in this lecture so first of all let's look at some of the important applications of synthrophaser technology so if we classify the synthrophaser technology applications, we can see that it can be classified as offline applications as well as online applications. In the offline applications, we have the model validation, we have post disturbance analysis, whereas in the online applications, we have wide area visualization and monitoring, state estimation, oscillation monitoring, frequency stability monitoring, voltage stability monitoring and so on and it is obvious that if we can monitor the system in a better way in an efficient manner then probably our control can also become better and it can even become faster so better monitoring can facilitate better control so having said these i also want to specify here that we do also have some other applications of synthrophaser technology but I just chose a few of them just to give you an idea, an overview of how powerful synthrophaser technology is and how we can apply that technology to our power system. So now let's look at some of these applications. So let's first look at the offline applications of synthrophaser technology. So the first one is model validation. Now it is extremely important for us to model the power systems in the form of mathematical equations. So the models can be at the component levels, describing the different components in the power system, like generators for example, and gradually they can come up to the system level as well. And it depends on how well we model or form the equations for those components in the system that will decide how accurate we can be while doing the planning studies or maybe the operational studies as well. So a good model will facilitate us with better uh, planning and better operation. Now for good model, we need to have a lot of measurements. We need accurate good measurements and we need to see how the component or the system behaves when certain inputs are given. So it is extremely important that we get a lot of measurements which look at the dynamics of the behavior of the particular system under study for which we may need to build the model for. And now if we just think that if the scalar data is coming once in 4 to 6 seconds, it cannot capture the dynamics of the system. If we are not able to capture the dynamics of the system, then our model may not really reflect the true reality of that system or the component. Let me show you an example as a proof of what I am saying. So we all know that on August 10th, 1996, there was a blackout in the Western Interconnection System. So when the blackout took place, Actually, if you see the diagram here, the first subplot shows the actual behavior of the power in the California Oregon intertype, which is known as the COI. Now, you can see the oscillations in the power and those oscillations are actually increasing with time. However, when the task force analysis, they started analyzing the system behavior using their simulation models after the blackout they wanted to simulate the exact scenario and wanted to see whether they were seeing these kind of increasing oscillations in the system 
Unfortunately, or I don't know even if you can say fortunately, this is the response that they saw for the same Koi line and they did not even see any oscillations which were increasing. This second figure is the result that they had got when they, when they had used the models for simulation and, and that is the point they realized, oh, something is wrong with the model then. Because when we give the same inputs to this model for the simulation, it's not giving us the same output which was actually noticed, which are the increasing oscillations. So something, something is problematic with the models. That is when they started looking into the models, they wanted to revise those models and they found that, oh, the models were not correct. Had there been synchrophaser data which, which could be seen or obtained at the rate of 10 to 60 frames per second, that would have captured all these system dynamics and using these kind of measurement information, a good model could have been prepared. And that was a lesson learned or one of the lessons learned from this kind of a blackout and the analysis of that blackout. So if we have good measurements, if we have enough measurements and fast measurements capturing the system dynamics, if we use those kind of measurements to study the system behavior or a component behavior under different conditions, that is what will enable us to build better models of the component or the system. Now it is advisable to take care of the PMU models as well while we do the system model validation or the component model validation using the PMU data. That is an important suggestion I would say. Well, now let's look at the other offline application of synchrophaser technology which is the post disturbance analysis. Now, when, when blackouts take place or when any, any problem takes place, one of the important things that the analysts do is to recreate that situation and see what exactly went wrong. That's like a post-mortem of the system. Many of you are probably aware that when the uh, investigation goes on for the air crash, the analysts after the accident, they take the black box data and also the flight data recorder data and try to recreate the situation and see what went wrong. So here also during the post disturbance analysis for power systems, the analysts need to have all the data in a synchronized manner, in a time synchronized manner, so that they can recreate or reconstruct all the sequence of events properly and see what are the different things that had happened. And especially that becomes very important when there are multiple power system components involved in that kind of a disturbance. Now, it is this synchrophaser technology which has the capability of providing wide area time synchronized phaser data. And when you get such kind of a data, you can easily recreate in a time synchronous manner all the events that led to a problem or an event or even a blackout. That is what the synchrophaser technology helps the analyst in. So you can see this figure and it shows that during the August 14th, 2003 blackout, there was a separation of bus angle that could have easily suggested the analysis that there was something going wrong with the system, that the stress in the system was increasing. So when, when the task force uh, sat and when they tried to look at the data, they looked at the angle values and you can see that the angle separation between the two buses at uh, Cleveland and West Michigan during the normal system conditions, this angle separation was less than 20 degrees also. But when the system became more and more stressed, the angle separation clearly indicated because that angle separation now became more than 100 degrees and that easily gave an indication to the analysts that you know there was a lot of stress in the system. So that's how, how easily with the synchrophaser data or with the PMU data 
A post disturbance analysis becomes much simpler than it used to be without centrifugal technology. Now, having talked about these two offline applications of centrifugal technology, let's now look at some of the online applications of this technology. So, let's talk first about the wide area monitoring and visualization. Well, we all now know that PNUs collect data from the system and then when I say system, it can be different substations which are geographically apart, quite distant from each other. But because of the time synchronization, we can get the wide area information and that is a very important aspect of good wide area monitoring and visualization process. Now, not only this, but like I had mentioned to you earlier, that PMUs can estimate these voltage and current phasors at a very high rate which can vary between 10 frames per second to 60 frames per second and what it makes possible is the monitoring of the system dynamics. So with this enhanced view of the whole wide area system with this fast rate of data coming in from that wide area several applications have been developed by different vendors which aim at providing a visualization to the control operators, the, the operators working at the control centers. So if they get a good view of what is exactly happening in the power system, that is what will enable them to take good decisions to control the system if something is going wrong. So following up the figures that you can see, uh, which show some of the existing uh, visualization and monitoring tools like the RTDMS uh, from EPG and a phaser point from Alstom. Well, now let's look at how the state estimation can also be enhanced or improved using the centrophaser data from the PMUs. So now, now like you all know that the voltage and current phasors can be measured even at the substation level using the PMUs. And these voltage and current phasors, if you, if you want to estimate that at the central level, at the control center level, then we can use the following equation which is M is equal to HX plus E where M is the measurement vector. And typically for a linear state estimator, we will have the voltage phasor at bus I, the current phasor at bus I, and also the current flow between bus I and J phasor, and the current flow between bus J and I, which is also a phasor. So these can be typical measurements that can be taken into account. Now the H matrix will be linear matrix in this case because it will be mainly consisting of maybe in this case the identity matrix it can uh, also have the elements from the y bus so that becomes linear and x like we all know in this case are the states of the system which are the voltage phasors which means the voltage magnitude and the angles at the bus so now with this kind of an equation for state estimation the computation becomes non-iterative. That is a big step. Because when the computation of states becomes non-iterative, these are the advantages that you can get. It becomes extremely fast computationally and less burdensome as well. Plus, because it is non-iterative, there is no question of failure to converge. So these are the two important advantages that can be gained out of the Synchrophaser technology which will now enable linear state estimation. Well, now because you might not have PMUs covering the entire system, so we might need to have PMUs covering certain part of the system and then a remaining part we have covered with the SCADA. So we can get both these measurements and there is something called a hybrid state estimator that can use PMU data along with the SCADA data and estimate the states of the system. Now, of course, this will be at a slower rate than a linear state estimator, but looking at today's practicalities, probably hybrid state estimator is one of the important things that one might want to have at the control center. 
Now let's look at another important monitoring facility that the Synchrophaser technology provides us and that is the oscillation monitoring. Now we know that because the PMUs are now giving data at a very fast rate, at a very high reporting rate, it is possible to detect the poorly damped modes at an early stage. And what this enables us is, if we can detect the local and the inter-area oscillations or the modes at an early stage, proper control actions can be triggered at the right time. That is very obvious. So that is how important synchrophaser technology is even for oscillation monitoring. And as you can see, this is a typical uh, OMS flowchart and it can look at the oscillations that go on in the system when, when it is at quasi steady state or ambient conditions as well as it can detect the oscillations and uh, do the analysis of the oscillations during the contingencies or post contingency situations. So now let's look at another important uh, aspect which is the frequency stability monitoring which is also aided by this synchrophaser technology. Now we all know that PMUs can not only measure the voltage and current phasers but they can also measure or estimate the frequency of the system. And as we all know that frequency is a very very important indicator, it's a key indicator of the balance between the generation and the load in the power system. So looking at the frequency, a lot of important conclusions can be made and if we look that the frequency is decreasing or maybe the frequency is increasing in some situations, we can probably take proper control actions at the right time and prevent even a frequency instability situation. Like you can see in the figure that early detection of frequency swings triggered proper control actions at the generators and that probably saved a system. So that's very important. That's, that's how important synchrophaser technology is in uh, detecting frequency stability problems and even helping it to control. Well, now let's talk about one of the other most important stability problems that especially the power systems these days have been facing, which is the voltage stability problems. With the increasing loads in the system, the power systems are very stressed. And it is probably the synchrophaser technology that can help a lot in the detection of this voltage stability problems. Now even though voltage stability is defined as the ability of a power system to maintain steady voltages at all its buses, after a disturbance takes place but you know it's, it's a very interesting phenomenon because voltage magnitude is always not a good indicator of the system stress and the reason is simple nowadays we have a lot of voltage control devices in the substations they have a set point and they maintain the voltage at the particular buses where they are installed to the set values and even when the system becomes more and more stressed, you can still see the voltage at the set level. That is a misleading fact because just looking at the voltage magnitude, one would feel that, you know, the system is probably quite stable. We are far away from the point of voltage collapse, which is not ideally true. To solve that, we know that voltage phasor is actually a better indicator of system stress because voltage phasor will contain the information of not only the voltage magnitude but it will also contain the information of the voltage angle and as I mentioned earlier that angles are excellent indicators of system stress and like we know that if we have PMUs voltage phasor data can be easily monitored at the substation levels and as a matter of fact many of the voltage control algorithms they work at the substation level itself. So if, if they, they are dependent on the voltage phasor data to take a decision of control instead of relying just on the voltage magnitude data even the voltage stability control mechanism can improve because the voltage stability monitoring has improved. Now it turns out that there have been several researchers who have worked on developing approaches for online static analysis of voltage stability. And some of the very common approaches include the following. So the first one is 
the centralized system model based approach so this may include one of the methods like monitoring the reactive power reserve margin of the system in real time using centrifugal data the other approach is a bit different from this model based approach and that's the local bus phasers measurement based approach which take the data the centrifugal data like voltage phasers and the current phasers from the pmus at a particular substation and try to come out with an index to quantify the voltage stability margin of the monitored bus now there is something in between these two approaches and that's the measurement model based approach and that's a kind of hybrid model based approach and we at washington state university have developed a real time voltage stability monitoring application software which is called the rtvsm tool that uses the measurements as well as the model of the system to some extent and it computes the voltage stability margin of all the load buses in the system which is called the vsai or the voltage stability assessment index on a scale of 0 to 1 where a value which is far away from 1 or closer to 0 will indicate that the particular bus or the system is highly voltage stable and a value which is near 1 would indicate that the particular load bus of the system is almost near the point of voltage collapse and you can see the visualization of the voltage stability monitoring algorithm in the rtvsm tool which can give a very good indication to the system operators from voltage stability standpoint now we have discussed about the different applications the offline applications as well as the online applications of centrifugal technology and now it's time that we review the industry needs for centrifugal technology this is a very powerful slide i would say because it brings out the different applications of centrifugal technology and it lists which are the critical ones from the industrial standpoint and you can see the different kinds of stability monitoring like the frequency stability monitoring or the angle stability monitoring or voltage stability monitoring those are the critical things for the industry and this also shows some other applications like say state estimation or maybe congestion management or model benchmarking and all those applications and you can see which ones have more challenges with regards to the deployment which are the different applications which will need more number of pmus in the system which will need lesser pmus in the system and which are easily uh, deployable that is the information that you can get from this particular slide well that's the end of lecture module 3 hopefully you have now got an idea of the different applications of centrifugal technology we would like to believe that it is this centrifugal technology which has probably brought a revolution to the power system analysis section i would say because the very way that we used to analyze systems before centrifugals were born was different than what it can be right now we have a lot more information that we can make use of and that's why you can see so many applications being there for centrifugal technology and hopefully there will be many more applications in the future well that's about it in this lecture i will meet you again in the next lecture thank you so much